Well, I just got back from Scale Model World 2021. Hey guys, it's Model Making Time, and today I wanted to show you around Scale Model World 2021. Whether you could be there in person or whether you couldn't, we're gonna go around the show together. I didn't really show myself that much in like videos or anything, and I tried to do a balance of videos and pictures. I probably haven't got every display covered in here either. I was limited both on time and battery life, so I've done as much as I can. What I've tried to do is get a video sample of most of the displays and also get some pictures of models that caught my eye. What catches my eye may be different to what caught your eye. If you like what you saw, a lot of model groups will either have a public Facebook page or a website or something where you can go and look at their models and I suggest you do so. That's the best way to promote your favourite model maker. I think I've got me, of course. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know that these people have an insane amount of talent. It was amazing going to the show. It really reinvigorated my spirit for model making. I mean, not that I really needed it, but still, it really did. I only walked away with two purchases. Before we get too far into it, I thought I'd show you what I got at the show, which includes this brochure for Scale Model World 2021, which is free, which is a nice little memento. I got these two Sci Heart 148 scale F16 decal sets. These are actually from Marcus at Spruce RX, who gave them to me because they, I know another viewer was going to send me an, an F16 in 148 scale. So, when if that actually arrives, I'll be making it in one of these two schemes. Which one do you think I should do? Ignoring the state of the box, because it got coffee spills on it, I've got Armour Hobbies TS11 Ishtra. This is a Polish jet trainer, and I've been looking to do this for a while. I may have some. That wasn't an oven kit falling off my lap. <laughs> I've been looking to do this for a while. I may or may not have some other parts to uh, make or something else. The only other model kit I bought at the show, I know, I only bought two, was this, a Vickers VC-10 in RAF colours. And that's because my dad actually served at Bryce Norton flying on the VC-10, so I wanted to build one. There is a one cent second scale version, but I mean, bitch, I do not have somewhere to store that. So we went for 144 scale. And uh, yeah, I think it'll work really nicely and it'll look really super cute. So really excited to build this. Editing me here, I forgot to say that FX went out the show this year, nor were Raval or anyone else. So it was kind of a bit of a weird year, really. Um, a lot didn't come due to either COVID restrictions or international restrictions, and some were for other reasons. So it was a very odd year. I know there's a lot of opinions on it. I don't want to go into the politics of it at all, but yeah, just what I'd say. Anyway, back to real me. If you want to see the pictures themselves um, in a non-video capacity, then head over to my website, Ms. Modeler. The article will be out on Monday the 15th of November. So let's go to Telford together, guys. The Scale Model World 2021. So we're here at Scale Model World and there's a bit of a heat to get in. So hopefully it won't take us too long, but let's go. I know some of you would prefer just a slideshow of things, but I'm trying to do something different and just try and show as much as I can um, and just show some of my favourites. I will highlight to you when I think something is, like to my personal taste, a favourite, but there's so much out here, guys. You really need to go to the show yourself. So, yeah. So I kind of wander around the already and we went to all the shops and everything looks pretty good. It's a lot smaller than the last time I came, so that's why I came in 2018 or 2019. And it was all three boys. Um, I'll show you in a second, like this one was basically just food now, which is bizarre. There's a lot less international stuff, which you can expect. Um, also, people like have a plan, uh, apparently due to COVID. I'll show you that we had double activation to get in, um, but they didn't really scan me. You just show you how the QR code, it's pretty odd. At least it's back on. <laughs> so, we're gonna go have a look around um, a few stores, uh, because it's really busy. I won't be in front of the camera for any of it, so I'll just show you this one. So we're starting with the aerobatic display team, SIG, which is special interest group. And my God, they have this fabulous display for the red arrows and all these British display team aircraft below. And they genuinely looked fantastic. This is the SIG that everyone always says I should join because, you know, I have such a vested interest in aerobatic display aircraft. And this display was incredible, honestly. And there was some what if stuff that you'll see in a bit that just blew my mind. Like this is, hands down probably and no disrespect to you know the amazing teams that i know but this was one probably my favorite stand at the show today i just thought it was so vibrant and fabulous it was amazing i mean just yeah so i had to pay this one first guys i wanted as many people to see it as i could uh but everything else i've just put in and the order i showed it there's no bias at all so here is the buccaneer 
uh, sick. And the buccaneer is something that I have very close to my heart because my dad bought me a frog buccaneer kit and I lost the canopy and never built it unfortunately. So it's one that's on the list that I need to do at some point but I've always been fascinated by the buccaneer. It looks, it's just very charismatic and I remember having this in Flight Simulator 2004 as well and um, yeah I just absolutely adore the buccaneer and they did such a good job showing it in all its variations and all its schemes and I particularly love this older blue and white scheme um, which I think was it a naval scheme I think? So we're hopping over to Sheffield now, um, and I think it was two, two to soldiers plays right next to each other, I think it was Rumford the other one, but uh, yeah, this was an incredible display. Obviously the centerpiece is this gorgeous VC-10, Again, my dad flew in VC-10, so that's something I hold great to my heart, I was lucky enough to fly in one as well, and yeah, it was just, that, that really just stole the show for me, you know, personal taste, but it just looks so good, it's such a unique aircraft as well to have built these days but that didn't stop this HE 111 catching my eye over I see you so here we are over to White Rose Modelers and I really loved the display here it was very childish and kitsch it just it looked really great they had a wide variety of models there that just looked incredible I was really really thrilled to see the variety at the show this year in particular I mean, I've even taken pictures of tanks, guys. Like, come on. <laughs> it just shows how great it is. And there's so many dioramas. Like, yes, guys. So many people doing dioramas these days. It looks amazing. I'm so happy about it. This was the Breitling uh, Fighters Warbirds SIG, I'm assuming. I, I wasn't <laughs> too sure in it, so please forgive me. But I just thought the detailing in this cockpit looked brilliant it's you know it's kind of sparse but like it looks incredible right so I, I just had to get some video of it um we also got a picture of this lovely bf 109 here as well which just really took my breath away it just looked fantastically finished here's a, just another shot of this sort of area as well with the buccaneer and we're back at the wife's sick. And this is just because I got some extra B-roll video of it as well. And I just wanted to show you guys because I, you know, showed some more of the other display teams in a bit more detail. Uh, I, I wish I'd taken more pictures of this, I'll be really honest with you. Particularly the Yellow Jacks one you'll see in a moment. It was just really cool to see so many other aircraft for different display teams in history. And here it is, the iconic Yellow Jacks Hawk, which I think is a very common what if and I just love it. And I need to do this at some point. And here is Novi Sad uh, Club, which I think is the Serbian club, right? I think it's actually from Serbia. Um, and that's like awesome. It's nice to have some international, uh, you know, presence at the show this year, particularly with all the restrictions that are in place. Um, I think I've seen these guys here before. They have a lot of stuff by Latia, a lot of unique models. Um, as you can see there, that was the Gleb. They've got this beautiful um, Flying Stars Soho Gleb, um, Super Gleb, sorry, G4, uh, which just looks like fantastic. And here's another one um, in sort of a more standard scheme and another display team for Serbia and a J22 Areo as well, or a IAR 93s, I think it was. And I just love their whole display. It was beautiful. Like, mwah. And this one I thought I had more of. Um, I actually talked to the, uh, the the lovely gentleman you can see at the back there and he told me a lot about the models, but for whatever reason, I didn't seem to actually have the video of that. So that was a massive shame, but one of the most vibrant displays at the show, like absolutely. Now this is Milden Hall, and they had a really lovely display as well. A couple of things that caught my eye here, mainly this MiG-21 you're gonna see at the bottom here. And these airliners as well, the unique schemes, I just, I, I love them. There, so that's really what caught my eye here. And again, other people are gonna have different interests. I know my tastes are not gonna be the same as everyone else's. I know I build weird things, but yeah, look at that lovely finished MiG-21. I just thought it looked gorgeous. This is the New Zealand SIG. I was surprised at this. I don't know why. <laughs> I just didn't think it was here. Doesn't have a, a CT4 though. Maybe that's something that I'm gonna build. Who knows? <laughs> uh, but yes, New Zealand SIG. I thought it was beautiful. Like I, I, I was just really shocked by the variety of things there. It was, again, one of, in terms of like country specific SIGs, this may have been my favorite one at the show this year. It just, it was really, really stunning, honestly. It was just really well presented. Battle of Britain's I mean, 
come on. Of course we knew this was going to be here. And yeah, it was a really, really good variety of things here from both Allied and Exercise. It was also nice. Italy was represented and that's so often forgotten in Battle of Britain. Not that they really did a massive amount, but I love the Sea of Fortitude Falco, so I am going to be massively biased towards that. But this was also next to the Hurricane Sig as well. And yeah, it was just really, really cool to see such a massive span of uh, service users of the Hurricane. I just, it was so beautiful. Like, I, especially older insignia is a lot more vibrant and colorful and beautiful. And they just, on the Hurricane, just look so elegant and classy. It just, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. There's a Yugoslavian one really, really caught my eye as well, as well as the Irish one at the back here. Just, yeah, like, they just look so good, guys. Bomber Command over here, and they've got all three of the V-Bombers. Some of them more than once. We all know your girl here loves the Victor, Hanley Page Victor. It is my favorite V-Bomber. I don't care what anyone says. I just love that crescent, y'all. And yeah, I just, <laughs> I just was stunned. Like, the Valiant looked amazing. And then they had the Vulcan as well, which is also in white anti-flash uh, colors, which you don't always see it in really these days. And then we had the Victor here in the camo, and I think it looks the best in the camo rather than the gold colors. IPMS Gloucester here as well, representing. And they had a really good variety of things. Yet again, I mean, you can see already, there's a lot more like, Transformers, anime, Gundam at the whole show this year and Gloucester had some of that presence as well. This tram, if you've ever seen me play City Skylines on Twitch, which I need to probably do again at some point, I am obsessed with trams as a form of transportation. And so as soon as I saw this, I was like, wait, I can make a model tram? Someone, someone get me a tram right now. <laughs> So I had to get some good pictures of that. But everything on this was just so intricate for this whole display. I was just like, wow, you did such a good job on everything. Obviously they have their own show as well. Um, it's towards my parents, so maybe I'll go, maybe I'll try and go there next year. That would be really cool. I wanna go to more model shows next year. And maybe I'll do some more videos on them. Cause that would be really cool, right? And I love the ones on the, like, the turntables like this, they just look so cool. Especially when it's a Gloucester Gladiator, one of like the coolest biplanes ever, guys. Now, IPMS Stafford, and I just want to give like mad respect to these guys. These guys were some of the funniest guys I've ever met. And all those buses, by the way, scratch built. Mm-hmm, yeah, scratch built. But IPMS Stafford were some of the friendliest people I've ever met in like my modeling life. They were so lovely and approachable. It, it honestly just made you feel like you are a part of the modeling community. Even the person I was with who has no interest in modeling, they were just so kind to them and welcoming and you know talked about how you always have the person there who doesn't like modeling. But yeah, they, they were just super lovely, mad respect to them. They were like awesome. This was really cool as well, the really wild SIG. I just, I, I'm so glad there's other stuff than military finally getting like massive presence at these shows. Um, trigger warning for arachnophobia. Oh, ah, spider. But yeah, that I don't know why that was really just that took took my blew my mind. Like, yeah, just so nice to see stuff that's you know natural or fantasy that's just really getting a presence in the modeling world these days. It's, lovely. So this is Project Cancelled, obviously, as the name implied, there's a lot of cancelled projects. Some of these you'll recognise, some of these will be things that, you know, do exist, but may not be in the scheme that they were meant to be in. Other things never even made it past the drawing board phase. So there's a lot of interesting projects on here, and I always love seeing uh, I, both What If and also just, you know, alternative schemes on things. It was a really, really well laid out display. They were happy to answer any questions you had about anything. Uh, and that big one, I think, on the right hand side, if I remember correctly, was actually 3D printed. Like, wow. This is what if as well. So this is le potentially less so project cancelled, but also just anything that your mind wants to do. And it just, you know, rivet counters be gone sort of thing, which, you know, as someone who is not particularly skilled, I am a massive fan of, particularly this one, like, <laughs> just amazing like a medical lightning Phew, mind blown y'all yeah, 
it's just it's just a really really lovely creative sick i just I, yeah like look at them they just look incredible guys south cheshire crew and yeah this is another really vibrant beautiful display i particularly love the two at the front that we've just gone past i think they were probably my favorite on this display and um, obviously that massive b36 peacemaker bag like that's always an impressive model even like if it's just on its own <laughs> it's part of this massive display it just looks dominating again italian aircraft <laughs> you guys know that's close to my heart right so that's the thing that I love the most on this but again lovely dioramas things that you know bring models to life and mean that they're just not a static aircraft it's something I really need to learn how to do so here we are Thames of Valley scale model club and wow they packed a lot onto this space and I don't blame them I'd want to show all of these as well but it was just such a lovely variety and again like lorries and cars at Horsham next to it it's just a really nice contrast as well I I'm really glad that there is so much variety still in the modeling world now I have a massive bias with these guys at Stoke and Trent Model Club because I used to be part of this and though I'm no longer a member, I spoke to them for a very long time and it was really nice to meet those guys again and hopefully I'll even go to one of their meetings at some point. They meet on Wednesdays uh, at Salvation Army in Longton if I remember correctly. Please correct me if I'm wrong, Fraser, because I know you're probably going to see this. Uh, but yes, again, a massive display, a wide range of things. They do anything from like what if stuff to just like really colourful dioramas like literally anything they they do and I I know I have a bias here but they they genuinely always put on an absolutely incredible display they did when I was with them they do now they continue to thrive as like a really creative um in, in ingenious club and they just produce really wonderful I mean look at that the dropping the poppies there and these hawker p1128s from guy you just look incredible and 1091 here as well like Come on, tell me you're not impressed because, honey, I know you're impressed. Like, these just all look fantastic. This diorama, by the way, one of the favourite dioramas at the whole show. Again, it's just nice to see people taking risks and liberties with anything in modelling these days. And again, look at that. It's just, it's stunning. Honestly, I, I, do, I could just not, I don't have the mind to do these. Oh yeah, and there's little like beautiful in the pink aircraft, just this is so cute. We're on to Southampton next, and they had a lot of dioramas, and there was a lot of different moods in their dioramas, and a lot of energy and motion. Like, I mean, holy, mm, how do you get the water looking so like? motionful when it's like a static one also i didn't know which one this was from but these are like my favorite tanks ever a pink panther and a tigger tiger but yeah i don't think they were from what we've just seen nasa sig again not something i'm massively interested in but i wanted to show them and this is rumsey model club i didn't take a video of them apparently but i just thought this aircraft carrier in particular was absolutely incredible top notch work and this car as well i have no interest in cars i just thought it looked really really cool and this little diorama here of the same aircraft in three different scales was just tickled my fancy and this lovely world war one scene here as well just yeah like wow it's just so cool like oh i just wish i was just talented so here's a sci-fi and fantasy sick and they really caught my eye because it's again just nothing military or vehicle wise there is a bit more of a loot section we're going to see in a moment i have no real opinion on this it's not my type of modeling but for some people this is the type of modeling and you know what good for them it still takes a lot of skill especially with skin tones this is a really cool scene i love the vibrancy of the laser as well it just looked amazing and this trial like trojan horse Mwah. like beautiful oh and yeah cute little airplanes i had to i had to <laughs> they look so cute so this was the Scandinavian area with a Danish SIG next to the Swedish and Finnish SIGs as well. And as someone who's always been a massive fan of Scandinavian aviation, I really loved this corner of the model show. Uh, particularly this uh, Draken and also the F-16 that's on the, uh, 
on the main point of the display. You'll get a picture of that in a moment. That was probably my favourite F-16 that I've seen at the entire show. I mean, look at that. It's like literally a literal flying Danish flag. It's one of the most beautiful F-16 schemes I've seen. The Swedish leg, very, very colourful. I love how they've done like the yellow aircraft on the blue area. Such a thought out display. And the finish next to it just looks incredible. I mean, yeah, there's such a variety there. It's such a good representation of Scandinavia. We've got Italy here as well, who made a joke about the fact that they had no one there. They had that little panda watching over the whole uh, table, which I thought was adorable. And obviously as I'm building the Frecce Tricolori right now, they were amazing things for me to look up to because I'm never going to reach that level. But my god, they look great. Heading over to Portsmouth now, and this is what took my eye here. This soccer glab. Um, this was a Serbian display scheme, if I remember correctly. Uh, I think it was a solar display scheme, or it was a task school scheme or something. It just looks amazing, and it caught my eye. The, the Soko uh, Super Glab G4 always catches my eye. I used to have like five of those kits, they're so rare. Now I have one, <laughs> that's quite depressing. But <laughs> whenever I see one built, I just have to see it. Keely Kaylee, however you say it, I'm sorry if I mispronounced the name of your area, but it was a, a club that really memed <laughs> modelling culture. With this, <laughs> the ritual of the rivet counters, hands down, best, most created diorama. <laughs> it was just so funny. Um, and yeah, they have these uh, Daleks here as well, which again, just really, really lovely. <laughs> I just can't get over the ritual of the rivet counters. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh my. Anyway, yeah. They they had a really, really vibrant display. I've I've used the word vibrant too many times in this video. I'm so sorry. You were there for SIG again. I didn't really have much interest in it, so I didn't look at it too much detail. Instead, I looked at this the Thunderbirds SIG, I think. I don't know if it was a SIG. Either way, childhood. <laughs> Nostalgia, so yeah, I, I had to obviously spend my time looking at this because it just looks incredible and they look so amazing. <laughs> like, it's unreal how great they looked. Wow, just wow. This is the only footage I have for the stick. I think it's Top Gun, I'm not sure. For some reason, this is one of the few where I just forgot to write down the name of the club and I really apologize, but I just wanted to show model trucks. I have zero interest in them. I just thought they looked really cool. Like they were really well made. They looked incredible. They looked so lifelike. IPMS Swindon uh, had some really, really cool models. There was one in particular that really caught my eye, which is, you've just seen it there. The Hawker Hunter of, uh, of the Swiss Air Force just looks mind blowing. Like, tell me that that is not impressive. If you say it's not impressive, you're a liar. <laughs> IPMS Riven Hall, and again, a lot of sci-fi elements off over to the side here that I have a lot of respect for. This Wolverine really popped off and looked amazing. Norwegian Spitfire, we like a bit of diversity and uh, this JF-17 as well in Pakistani Air Force colours, which I have a lot of respect for. Gotta love something that isn't just European or uh, Western built at all. This Atta again looked absolutely stunning. She was just thriving guys and there's a little uh, speeder there now this was cars and as i was walking with my friend, they were just like you don't even like cars and i was like no no i don't but they look amazing like i can appreciate the workmanship that's gone into them <laughs> they look like i don't mean this as an insult they look like toys that have been made like proper scale not toys but like metal models. They don't look like they've been made by a person, they look so perfect. And same here, every, just, blah, wow. They looked so good. It, things I have no interest in, but they looked so stunning. And this one was a lot of this is scratch built, which I also thought was incredible. Tornadoes, so again, an aircraft I love. I actually built one of these when I was a kid and then my parents had to get some work done on the house and it got destroyed and I've never built one since. <laughs> So I need to do one at some point. I thought that was amazing. And then over in the Luftwaffe SIG as well, we had some too. Love the layout of this, splitting the two sides of the Luftwaffe. And the A400 was something that I loved. Spruzoras is someone, as I said earlier, Marcus, is someone that I, uh, I've got to know through streaming at Ms. Model on Twitch. And yeah, I had to just show you that big 29 looked amazing. 
Association of London Modelers coming in strong with that Battle of Brand style acting, which just looks awesome. <laughs> like, honestly, I just, yeah, I mean, I cut off part of it by accident. But wow, like, look how great it looks. And the tie fighter behind it just, yes, queen. Absolutely. This was also one of the most beautiful scenes I've ever seen, by the way. So over in Hornchurch, we've got all these lovely display aircraft. And they were, again, one of the friendliest out of the show this year. Again, it might have just been me, but they were so kind and friendly. And just, yeah, really lovely guys. And I love that this Yellow Jacks, you know me, I love a display aircraft. And again, next to all the Fugas as well. So yeah, I, I they, they had a really stunning, bright, beautiful old display. Even these cars just yeah no interest but they look amazing and Futurama oh my god like I did not even know there was stuff made of Futurama if this is scratchable wow just oh, mind-blowing guys <laughs> I think they definitely did have one of the most like diverse displays of the show like hands down they just had everything literally everything and the kitchen sink and that terrifying Ronald McDonald there literally the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life over at Phoenix, I'm not sure if they are a certain area or an internet club or whatever, but again, they had a lot of like Gundam Japanese stuff that I know nothing about, but I'm really interested in because it looks really badass. And I'm aware that it's a really like popular growing area of the, the modeling trend at the moment. So yeah, I was really, really impressed. Oh, there we go. Kings Lynn, Phoenix, Kings Lynn. <laughs> I didn't even know until I saw it in my own picture. Um, this dump truck as well. Again, something just really unique and different. It just, yeah. Uh, this is when I just took a picture. I don't think I really got anything up close for this. And was back at IPMS had this really cool scene <laughs> from Star Wars that I just, like, who, who does that? It just looks so good. I was just, yeah. Again, I get, I look, I just, anything, and this, look at it, they took an actual plant and just, wow, mind blowing, guys, <laughs> just, oh, it was so cool seeing all of this in person, and again, this flying boat just going into the water, oh, and Captain Scarlet, this is a model I need, by the way, <laughs> so if anyone has one, please send it to me. <laughs> <laughs> And this is West Glamorgan. And they had a really, um, it was very aviation dominated, but yeah, seeing like this blonde Voss, uh, which, you know, always is captivating. This land speeder, this BF 109 over here. It was just a really lovely display and a bottom pull defiant, one of my favorite aircraft of all time in the night fighter scheme. So again, just had to get some looks at it. Now this airliner one, I was shocked how long I actually spent looking at this. Because again, I, I've never built airliners. I bought one once to do and then just never did it. But they do just look so cool. I really love airliner schemes. They have like such uniqueness about them. And I was like looking at them going, oh, that one's sort of represents my area. And I've always oh, flown on that one. And yeah, like just a lot of these are like older schemes that may not exist anymore. Or a lot. I've flown on a lot. The obviously not that, a newer aircraft. And um, done out another one that's sort of lost to the annals of time. Just, I don't know why. I just, I. Something's clicking with me about airlines. Maybe it's because I haven't been on one for a while. Um, so this is testing times. Uh, I'm assuming this was a SIG. I, I, if I'm wrong, I'm really sorry. This is what really caught my eye here because I didn't even know there was anyone who's made either a kit of this or um, even made one of these, but apparently Anagrad did. And then the T2 behind it, they just, oh, they look so good, guys. <laughs> what can I say? And this Vatral, the flying banana, just, always makes me smile whenever I see it. And this Harrier looked at, I, I'd never seen a Harrier in a scheme before, so that was really nice to see as well. This CF-104 as well, mm, stunning. So we're over to Rexon, somewhere I actually used to live for about two months, so could have been my most local model club, but that was never to be. And again, there's a really lovely variety of aircraft over at Rexon. Uh, built to a really incredible standard. I, I'm assuming they unfortunately got damaged in transit, but never mind. And this Blenheim, I think this stole the show for me on their stand. Uh, whoever made it, 
absolutely incredible work there in this Hamden as well. Also, absolutely incredible, stunning work. These two as well, um, I'm assuming this is meant to be, I don't know if it's from the film, I can't remember if Bell Harbour had a scene like this, but either way, that's what it reminds me of. Just looked beautiful, bellissimo. So we're over at the Great War, sick. And uh, again, so this is obviously World War One stuff. Something that I'm actually starting to get an interest in. So like this dreadnought for me just like popped and stood out. And I loved how this was sort of set out as, as well. It just looked really good. And I felt very emotional looking at these scenes um, depicting soldiers actually in World War One. I. I don't know why I'm getting very emotional <laughs> like looking at these, but yeah, like particularly, you know, this is by Remembrance Sunday. Um, I think it's really important to have models like these that help show how hard these times were. Oh, not the Arco DH2, classy as aircraft or water one. Just if anyone ever asks you, it is. <laughs> um, yeah, um, there was next to it a whole table full of World War One aircraft. I just got a couple of pictures of the the schemes that I remember from my childhood when I used to look at World War One aircraft. They just, yeah, I don't know why German schemes were always so fantastical and um I, almost surreal to be honest with you and this gotha was massive like absolutely massive this is british airlines i didn't get much more than this i just wanted to show it because i thought it was really really cool and this was uh, a submarine sig i think um this picture didn't turn out so well but i just wanted to try and get the overall scale of them uh, this is brampton model car but this is what caught my eye this ufo cat i think it's a few years old now if i remember correctly but you always see one or two of them at a show and they always look different but all look incredible and they had a couple of tiger schemes as well i wanted to capture because they just Tiger schemes always look good i mean that's what they're designed to do that's why there's a contest for them and this belgium spitfire looked incredible but next to this mosquito it just almost paled in comparison i'm so sorry west kent scale model club next up then they're the next to face us and this diorama would have looked absolutely stunning if it wasn't for this vickers wellington board of information which was one of the most impressive things i've ever seen in my entire life as a modeler however this royal Navy, I think, sick. If it's not, please someone just correct me where it is. Um, but this display, just boats are terrifying. Look at the rigging and the detail and the water and everything. Like, like this was, they were like, oh yeah, this is a working process. I was like, it looks incredible. <laughs> like everything on here looks so intricate and delicate and fragile and brittle, but it looks so stunning. Like, my mind is blown when I see people who can do ships to this level. They are incredibly talented people. Over to Coventry in Warwickshire, home of the Coventry Abbey Museum, which is my favourite Abbey Museum. They had an emergency scheme, uh, both real and non-real, and it was a really colourful display, really bright, flashy, ooh, beautiful, and I loved it. Again, like fire trucks, something you don't see all the time, and still just a lot of yellow, a lot of red. It was really different, really cool, and really brave of you guys to, to choose that. And I, I, I think it really paid off. Your display looked amazing. Over here to Manchester, first time I'd actually seen the NHS Hawks built by, oh, sold by Airfix together. As someone who, like, was a key worker and had to work through the whole thing, and had a really high workload, um, this was actually really nice to see, actually. <laughs> Like, weirdly, it, it resonated with me for some reason. Bolton my PMS over here as well, and I love these old buses. They just looked adorable. We had some tanks over here as well, and I know a lot of you love tanks, so I just thought I would get some footage of them. Um, but this is this is what I've got my eye. You guys knew it was going to be this, like, South African hawk, because why wouldn't it? And I've actually seen this scheme around, and I've wanted to do it for ages. And now I don't think I ever could because look how incredible that looks. <laughs> how can I ever top th that that person? Also cut off the nose of this F5 Tiger scheme by accident from um, Lancashire IPMS and somehow with the F18 as well. Sorry, my crappy phone that's broken. This as well, this AT-80 with a speeder going around it, all scratch built. It's massive. You can see it's me for scale next to it. Wow. <laughs> like, wow. And again, like all scratch built by, I think it's Paul Cocking, just 
you are an incredibly talented individual. Like, absolute respect to you. We're heading over to Salisbury now, and that tornado caught my eye. I'm nice, I'm gonna be honest on this stand. But having the two view bombers next to each other also looked incredible. Again, my phone cut part of it off because this wasn't my phone that I was using at this point, unfortunately. Um, so I it didn't quite do what I thought it would with the framing. I thought it was shooting in the 16 by 9. Oh, these Lord of the Rings rats as well. I saw someone building those on Twitch, they look amazing. Newark Model Club, who I think are actually based at Newark Air Museum. Again, amazing air museum. This was a quality for me, this egg at C17. Just, it was so cute, I have to. That was literally, that was the thing. And this looks like Digimon to me, right? Is it Wargreymon? I don't know, I could be massively wrong if I am. I'm so sorry if I'm massively ignorant. So West Northwark up now, and that DC3 Poppy, I think, I think I've seen that at a previous show before but I don't care, it looks amazing. I think they're all hand-painted as well, which just makes it even more impressive. It, even with that like massive model next to it, like the Casey, uh, is it 135? It, it still looks incredible. And I mean like their whole display just looked incredible, right? But at Wirral, they had this lovely Harrier scene, which really captured, I think, the essence of the Harrier, you know, being able to sort of go in diverse places and you know, take off anywhere, no matter if there was a runway or not. So yeah, I, I, that's what captured it for me. And this lovely trio as well, like, it's an unusual trio to have together, but they looked amazing. Also, Falcon flying, no one does them with flying, ever. They always use them landed, so that looked really cool. Uh, and they had some unique bits on their shelf as well. Um, I don't know the names of all these. I think this was a German secret project, but it never actually came to fruition that I thought looked amazing. Oh, and this Walking Dead scene, iconic, like, beautiful. Okay, so we're at Abingdon, and again, they have some similar models that we've just seen, but that B2 is what caught my eye, along with these uh, Enterprises over here, and these F-16s also had really lovely schemes on them, so I had to catch them. But that B2 just, <laughs> I just can't, it just looks so good. And over at Shropshire we have another Victor, this time in an anti-flash scheme, uh, but it had like a really lovely diorama to it, and a Nimrod. Love me a Nimrod. Nimrod is one of the most graceful aircraft I ever flew, I'm really glad that I got to see it flying uh, growing up, because it, again, just one of the most graceful aircraft, in my opinion anyway. Uh, and this Victor had a really, really, really cool layout to it. Like, I mean, just look at that. Like, don't you get the feel of urgency and dominance that aircraft would have had? Just absolutely incredible work. I'm assuming, yeah, but West Middlesex here, and this is what caught it for me. It's just like they've got like a little miniature version of them. <laughs> it was just so cute in this ME262 in winter, I'm assuming. I mean, overall, their display was as quirky as that little miniature representation of themselves that they had right at the start. It was just full of like lovely kitsch, niche thing. But we're going over to something very different, which was the MIG Special Interest Group. And wow, there was a lot to unpack here. A lot of MIGs from a lot of different places. I could not possibly cover them all. So I took a couple of pictures of some of my favorite examples um, that I saw there, including these that I just, yeah, I love the, the scheme on the second one there on the right. And these MIG 9s just, showed the development of the MiG. I thought it was really, really cool. Honestly, I, I, I'm not a massive MiG fan, but it was a really beautiful SIG to have here. And it just showed the diversity of non-Western models and yeah, I just, it, it's always nice to see something that's not Western focused, right? And that worked over here as well, the Soviet SIG, which had a lot of Chinese stuff, which again, I'm someone who started building a lot of Chinese stuff at one point um, with some reviews over on my website. Um, so I'm always really, really glad to see Chinese aircraft because I think they get massively overlooked in the West. So this is Plymouth and this was what really caught my eye, this um, Malta um, sort of centerpiece they had, which I just thought was stunning. Malta is a place that's very near and dear to my heart and in my personal life. So yeah, <laughs> I thought it was really, really lovely. They had a lot of these figures as well um, over to the left that 
it just again shows the diversity of model making as a whole. So this is the Splash Sig. They do amphibious aircraft or seaplanes. I think at the very least they have to be. I don't think they have to be amphibious actually, because um, a lot of them I don't think are at all. But there's a lot of um, interesting designs that you just wouldn't see elsewhere. Um, seaplanes are something that are obviously a dying breed, um, but they are sort of somewhat making a comeback. There's a couple of newer ones that have gone into production or started being made. So yeah, it's really, really cool to see them. But now we're over at Farnborough and that icebreaker and this cushioned craft, I mean hovercraft, or what I think caught my eye over here. And I think that's what I got the pictures of. Um, and this radar, like, again, something you just don't really see every day. Um, but this icebreaker, I just thought it looked incredible. I, I, I just, I could not get a picture of it. And this one, F100 as well, Danish F100, always a lovely sight to see whenever it's built. And this Mirage, and we'll see a lot more of the Mirage later on, there's a massive tribute to the Mirage. I have written Norfolk, and we have a lot of vehicles to start off with. And I don't know any of these sort of sci-fi steampunky things, but they look amazing and I want to know more about them. <laughs> and we're over at North Devon here. And this, wow. This is from somewhere in North Devon, apparently someone basically recreated a scene um, from back in the day. And I just thought it looked amazing. I, I honestly, I really wish I could build these. This is in one full four scale. So like a lot of work went <laughs> into that because that is a tiny, tiny scale that takes a long time to make it look incredible. And they did a fantastic job. Just look at it, my God. This was a marble stand. I did not have a massive amount of interest in it, but I knew a lot of people would want to see this. And again, it shows the direction modeling has gone with a lot of these figures having pop come, come into sort of the, the forefront of modeling. Um, but there was one here that I did have a lot of interest in uh, that we'll see a bit closer to the end, but you're seeing these uh, sort of classic color X-Men, which was sort of used in the, the 80s, was it the 80s cartoon, 90s cartoon? But either way, that's what I watched growing up. Um, so that's what really resonated with me, but there's a lot of obviously like, uh, Guardians of the Galaxy and modern stuff, but there we go. And but <laughs> you know, I had a massive crush on when I was like a, a, a child. <laughs> uh, so this is British Armour Sig. Again, I'm not gonna say anything really about tanks. I know zero about tanks. <laughs> Same for Russian wheels and tracks. I knew nothing about them. I just thought they looked cool and wanted you guys to be able to see them. And this is what I was on about earlier, guys. The Mirage Tribute. This was a, like, literally was the width of one of the halls. And I basically thought, I'm not going to be able to get video of all of this. So I'm just going to take pictures of the one that catches my eye. Again, not going to be the same for you guys necessarily. But I just went and got what I thought it prettiest. Really annoyed that <laughs> my camera cuts off the noses on a lot of them and I'm so sorry but we're just gonna have to live with it honeys I'm afraid. But these South African ones look absolutely incredible. I can't get over how vibrant the colour schemes were. They don't, the, the picture does not do them justice. And these tiger schemes uh, for the French at uh, the Army de l'Air, um, I'm assuming that naval as well. <laughs> yeah. I just, the Mirage is such a notorious aircraft. Oh yeah, like this new Libyan scheme as well. Like, wow. Um, oh, this cheetah scheme for the Atlas cheetah. Mwah. But yeah, uh, the Mirage is such a notorious aircraft. Known around the world, has served everywhere and active in every corner of the globe. So it was, it was about right, I think, for it to have such a massive representation. And there we see the Army de l'Air. This is the last one, and I think this was a German club. I'm not entirely sure. I didn't really get to manage to speak to anyone, but I think it's a German club, and it's the last one we've actually got today, guys. I can't believe it. This this was such an amazing show, honestly. Like, and and this display was really really cute. It, it didn't have a massive amount of models, but what they had, like particularly this, this Brazilian one, stunning. Oh yeah, and this cute beer one and nice. I've been here four and a half hours. I only bought two things. This is one of them. Because my dad used to buy these. Um, but you're gonna head off now because I've been around the whole thing. Met a lot of people, met a couple of you guys, which is amazing. And yeah, I'm gonna head off and uh, it's been absolutely amazing. Sort of wish I was coming back tomorrow, but I'd spend too much money. <laughs> so yeah. Thanks so much for watching guys. 
I'm just gonna go. I met a good couple of you at the show today and it was really nice to see you, whether it was just shouting my name and saying hi or whether it was coming up to me and actually coming to say hello. Some of you I had a nice long chat with, it was really awesome. Despite how small a channel I was, it was really nice to see some of you there. I really appreciate every single person who's subscribed and has watched and anyone who does in the future too. It really means the world to me. I have a really hectic life and modelling is one of the few things that I can just do and chill out to. And I haven't been able to stream recently and you probably noticed that. Part of that was because my headset broke, my phone broke, everything broke and I couldn't afford to replace it. I have now managed to replace it though. So I should be back to streaming again as well over on Twitch as Ms Modeler. So please go follow me over there if you haven't already. Please hit the subscribe button on YouTube as well. It does really help me out and you'll be notified of every video that goes live if you hit the notification bell. What's really weird is I actually did a video from like years ago going to the show but it got loads of hate because everything was like not high enough production value um so i'm kind of scared that's gonna happen this time too but we'll see <laughs> love you all bye i normally would take this opportunity to thank you for watching this but what i want to do is thank every single person who took their model there because you are incredible the people who like spend all day answering questions for the public it's not easy and you you guys like held an amazing show scale model world 2021 was a scary return after obviously the cancellations that happened last year and just thank you so much so to every single one of you take a bow you did an incredible job and that's all i have to say i'm not gonna beg you to just subscribe like honestly bother on everyone